YouTube as it going the goat house is back and in this video I'm going through every single NFL team we're taking a look at their biggest needs their top free agents and what their cap situation looks like right now obviously in that category things will change as we get closer free agency and within free agency uh, but to make this video I really had to evaluate each team you know their roster uh, their f upcoming free agents their cap situation and I learned quite a bit actually uh, some teams are in prime position to make take that next step whether it's from a bad team to a decent team you know good to great maybe elite teams some very impressive teams um, if they do free agency right here and there's some teams that surprise me in terms of yeah the situation they're in in, ter in terms of holes uh, cap situations so there's a, there's a lot going on here, a lot to go over. Really excited to do so. We do have full playoff coverage as well. Uh, 24 teams are in off-season mode in fan bases. They're in off-season mode already, so uh, we got you covered for both already. Playoffs, off-season, even the NFL draft, that's where the channel started, so can't wait to cover that. Please subscribe to both of our channels. 40K is our goal on both of those. New channel, the Goat House Plus. Link in the description for both channels and in the comments, so please subscribe. Would really appreciate it. And then our Twitter, at Goat House NFL constantly talking football, constantly talking the NFL every single day, live during games. So that's a must follow. If you don't have a Twitter and you like the Goat House, you like the NFL, go follow it. There's a link in the description in the comments. And the same goes for our Patreon, extra content there, and you can help support us. So on to the video. Let's start with the Arizona Cardinals, uh, and we'll take a look at their cap space, which is $69 million at this moment. Things can definitely change. Uh, and then take, take a look at their top free agents. You know, their main ones here, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, you know, still playing at a pretty high level and was their top receiver once again. Um, you know, do they resign him? We'll see. It's always a question. Every time he becomes a free agent, we kind of think he's going elsewhere. There's always always those rumors because he used to be the Minnesota Vikings ball boy that he can go back there, but he always ends up back in the Cardinals. Uh, they have the cap space to bring him back. The question is how many years, how much money. Kenyon Drake, who they traded for, surprises all on how good he played. Um, he's their best running back. I mean, not at the moment because he's going to be a free agent, but they would like him back. They, they, traded, they traded for him. He looked excellent for the Cardinals. I think they would like him back as their starting running back. They could look to trade David Johnson. And then a couple offensive linemen, um, Gilbert and DJ Humphreys, obviously you can get better in those categories. I think they could look to bring Marcus Gilbert back. I think that's a very, you know, it's a possibility. It's a realistic possibility. So uh, looking at their roster, I determined that offense line is their biggest need, in my opinion, uh, because they can use, they can upgrade pretty much anywhere. They, they can use pretty much anything. Tackle is obviously most important, um, but they, you know, they're going to take the best player available when, when given the chance for the of the NFL draft in terms of offense line, whether it's tackle or guard. That's my opinion. They could bring a guy back or two. Um, and then receiver is the second biggest need. They do have a number of receivers that can play. They're going to get guys like Hakeem Butler back, who we didn't get to see yet. Um, you know, so. They, they they have they have guys and if they re-sign Fitzgerald if they don't they still have guys Christian Kirk you know they have they have guys here but you know Isabella should take that next step too but nobody plays as many receivers as the Cardinals we see four or five wide receiver sets more than anybody in the league that's that type of offense that's the Kyler Murray Cliff Kingsbury it's their offense so uh, w when you want to succeed in that offense I should say succeed in that team. You have to succeed on offense, a high-powered offense, and, and better receivers make that a better team. More talented receivers make that a better team. So to me, receivers almost always going to be a need in that type of team, especially when Larry Legend is a free agent, which they very well can get back. And D-line, that D-line is pretty much empty right now. they got they got, got young guys in there that they don't really want to be playing as much right now. Um, they're they're going to have to get better in that category. And they have needs elsewhere. You know, they could use another pass rusher. They can use another defensive back. Of course, they need multiple offense lines. That's why offense lines number one. Um, you know, Kenyon Drake being being a free agent. They don't really like what David Johnson's bringing to the table. So, I mean, they have needs pretty much everywhere, and it's still a team in the rebuild mode. But it doesn't take a whole bunch to get this team on, on, on the winning track because it's a unique offense. It's a high-powered offense. So, I, I think if you just focus on that offense right away, to make it priority, offense line receiver, this team could uh, can win games even with a mediocre defense. It, it really could. So, I think that's where the priorities are going to be. Pretty good amount of cap space. So, we'll see. You know, after after those free agents, there's not too many big ones. So, that's kind of the good thing. You see, there's a bunch of teams we're going to go over that has a long list of you know, crazy impact free agents. Uh, let's talk about the Falcons next. They have 11 million in cash space right now. Not a whole bunch. They can possibly clear some more space. Uh, we look at their top free agents. The clear top one right now is Austin Hooper. He's been a solid tight end for them. That's kind of how I would, I would uh, 
you know, categorize him as solid. Up until this year, he was a very solid tight end for them and really took that next step. Uh, they're going to want him back. He's a key part of their offense. They're going to want him back. But then you look at the rest. You know, look at Devondre Campbell, who maybe his best season was still his rookie year. Uh, it has been okay for them. Vic Beasley's been a letdown. You know, they tried to trade him at the deadline. They couldn't make things happen. I, I, not really sure if he'll come back. If he does, it'll be cheap. And Jack Crawford, they could look to find a better defensive tackle next to um, Grady Jarrett, who's one of the top ones in the league. So not a lot of cap space, but the good news is you can focus that cap space on Austin Hooper. I, I've heard people say worst-case scenario is they franchise tag him. I don't think it's ideal to franchise tag a tight end. I think they'll want to clear a little more room and sign him. Uh, the bad news is they have a lot of needs. They have a lot of needs and they, they won't really have a whole bunch of cap space to make that happen. But they do like Cooper. They want him back because, kind of like what I just said about the Cardinals, it's two totally different teams, totally different systems. But what's the key for the Falcons? What's the easiest key for the Falcons to get back up on top, back into the playoffs maybe? Their offense has to be really good. They got Matt Ryan. They got Julio Jones. They got Calvin Ridley. Um, you know, they... they they have the, the easiest way is to make offense a priority, signing Hooper, trying to clear some cap, but mainly mainly what we have to do here is hit in the NFL draft, get some hits here. Um, so I determined the top three needs. Our defensive end, the lack of pass rush was pretty bad this year. You got guys like Vic Beasley, you have Adrian Claiborne's a free agent as well. Uh, Tack McKinley ain't cut it yet, but it's, it's good to have him around still. You need pass rush. Pass rush is the second most in thing in football after quarterback play. Um, but like I said, you know, the priority could be offense because that's the fastest way to get them uh, back up. But I, I like their current offense. You know, the offense line's been a mess the last couple of years, but they drafted pretty well last year where they can help that right away. Cornerback, another big need. They're definitely going to need some help there. That was the obvious one. Um, you know, could be in the running for a guy like Jeff Fakuda, you know, and, until they kind of went down the, the they're in their draft picks. They started winning games uh, as the season went on there. Uh, but running back, I think, is a big need. Like I said, offense. Let's get this offense going. I, you know, there's there's a lot of games where they had lack of a running game. You know, Freeman started to pick it up a little bit at the end, but they can get much much better and dynamic at running at the running back position. This can make the offense in you know the passing game that much better. You'll be able to run a little more play action. So I think running backs also a huge need. But another team where that they could use they they could use pretty much. You know, they probably need multiple pass rushers. Like I said, they need a D tackle next to Grady Jarrett. You need multiple defensive backs. Um, you, you know, if you if you can't get uh, Austin Hooper back, you you need a tight end. If you can't get Devondre Campbell, or you can't find an upgrade, which is very doable for not that much money, uh, you may need a linebacker. So they do have some needs. They do have some needs there, and with only about eleven million in cap space, the next team's the Ravens. Uh, the Ravens have about thirty six million in cap space at the moment. Uh, top free agents. We see some good ones here. We see some good ones. Patrick Owosso, uh stud young linebacker. I like him a lot. You know, the, we saw the same thing happen to their inside linebacker, their their leader in CJ Mosley last year, and they didn't want to pay up. They didn't want to pay the money there. And we'll see if they do it this year. He's not going to cost as much money, um, which is pretty crazy because I, I think he's not that far off of CJ Mosley. Um, but we'll see where they value that inside linebacker position. I, you know, I think they. I think they try to bring them back. You know, they have the cap space. They they already have a championship caliber team. It's not like it's a team that has to go out and really desperately find more elsewhere. Um, they kind of just got to focus on their own guys here, uh, including him, Matt Judon, who's their kind of their feature pass rusher. Really, their only solid pass rusher, honestly, from from the edge rush position, which is an outside linebacker in their three four. Uh, other than that, they get a good pass rush because of the blitzing. Uh, you know, they're they're a very well coached team. They're the top team in blitzing. But uh, I think they'll like Judon back, but that kind of brings up the same thing as the inside linebacker. They didn't want to pay for Zadarius Smith, who's a big-time player. Do they want to pay for Judon? Um, you know, they, they got some young guys. You know, they drafted Ferguson. They got some young guys uh, that, that could step up, um, you know, for the Ravens, for the outside linebacker position. So it's very possible those guys step up and they don't want to bring somebody back. But, you know, my money is bringing, on, bringing those top two guys back. Jimmy Smith, I think they can let walk. Um, you know, I think Jimmy Smith's a pretty good corner. He's getting up there in age, uh, but but they're pretty much set in terms of their starting corners: uh, Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. Michael Pierce, who's a veteran defensive lineman for them, um, has been pretty key. I honestly think a pretty good D line, veteran D line. They could get better there. Um, so we'll see what they do with it, with him. I think the priority is on those top two guys. They also have Brandon Carr, who's a free agent, 
But there's a team option on Brandon Carr, so they'll if they elect to bring him back, maybe they'll let him go. They don't want to pay him. Uh, Josh Bynes, another inside linebacker. Um, I think they would like to have him back if it's real cheap. Uh, and then Gus Edwards is technically a free agent, but he's an exclusive restricted free agent, which... Um, to sum it up, you know they're probably he's gonna be back in the Ravens. You know it's very unlikely he's anywhere else. Um, so pretty good cap situation, I'd say, for how good they are. Usually these top tier teams don't have that much cap space, or or if they do, they have tons and tons of free agents. Which the Ravens have some solid ones, but not as much as some other teams. I determined that outside linebacker is probably their biggest need because they can use one as it is, and they have Judon. Um, as a free agent, I think inside linebackers. We saw we see both of their starting inside linebackers. They do have L.J. Fort now, who they like a lot too. Uh, but Fort is uh, under contract because of a contract extension. But because they have a, a big time inside linebacker and Josh Bynes, who's helped them, I think that's another need. And then D line, it's a veteran D line. It's aging. Uh, I think they can look to get better there, and you have Michael Pierce as a free agent. But bottom line is uh, they don't have any humongous needs, and it's really not a surprise because they're a top-tier team. Uh, they could use corner depth, but it's not a top-three need for me when you need depth. you know, They're pretty much set uh, with what they got for starters. Uh, we're moving on to the next team. We're talking about the Buffalo Bills, who I am very impressed with here. Uh, $88 million in cap space. And it's not just the number that ma- that makes me impressed. I mean, that number is very impressive, $88 million. But you look at their roster and you look at their free agents, they don't have a lot. You know, With $88 million and with the team that was just in the playoffs had a pretty good season, you would think that they would have a lot of uh, you know, their top-tier players are free agents, but they really don't. Jordan Phillips, they're going to want back. Uh, they got a pretty good group of interior defense linemen, um, so I don't think it's the end of the world if they don't get him back, but he played pretty well on their team. Another plus side is that, yeah, he... He kind of this is kind of the Bills type of guy, you know. He wasn't really good elsewhere. Um, you know, teams may be scared to pay up a lot of money, so that's kind of a good thing for the Bills. He may not cost as much as you know the, the way he played. Uh, Quentin Spain was a big time. I, you know, I raved about that pickup last free agency. I thought he was very underrated. Um, you know, that was a good pickup. So they they can you know nobody else was interested in him last off season, so that could be another good thing. They actually can get him back for cheaper than how compared to how he played. Uh, the rest of the free agents they really don't need back. You know, they don't necessarily need Frank Gore back. We'll see even if if he wants to come back and to football at all. Uh, Shaq Lawson is um has been a letdown you know he's a decent rotation guy for them but they don't need him back if they want to bring him back he'll be super cheap um so the focus with the 88 million the focus could be on Jordan Phillips, Quentin Spain, guys that will be cheaper than I think what they put on the field uh it won't take much out of that 88 million in cap space so they are free with that cap space to make this team go from good to great and I absolutely love the situation the Buffalo Bills here have here um you know they have a they do have some pretty big needs um other things I would like to mention actually is Levi Wallace and Robert Foster are the are technically actually free agents but they're exclusive restricted free agents basically I would be shocked if they weren't back you know they're basically gonna be back um so then looking at their needs I think they have two pretty big needs actually uh receiver and it, it makes this even more beautiful, really, um, with with, uh, with their situation because you don't have to really spend big at receiver either because the receiver the, the receiver draft class is absolutely loaded. Everybody knows that you can go fill your entire unit in that rece- in that draft class. You spend big on your other need, which happens to be a great time in free agency to need it. Defensive end. In, on this defense. This was a very good defense without a really good pass rush on it. They got some good pressure from Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy, but not the best pass rush. If you upgrade this pass rush, this defense will be elite. It will be beyond elite. Uh, and you can do this. There's a number of free agents we'll talk about at that position. And the Bills have the money to... It would be okay if they overspend. If you overspend on a guy like Shaq Barrett, a guy like Jason Pierre-Paul, a guy like Everson Griffin, um, you know, number of guys... Uh, in that category, you know, it would be okay because you have the cash space and, and you'll have some left over. I think corner would probably be the third biggest need, but it's not a huge need. Um, they really don't have a whole bunch besides, you know, outside two or three guys. Uh, obviously, Tredavious White's one of the better ones in football, um, but it would be good to grab another one. But I, I think you really can focus the draft on pretty, you know, starting receivers in depth and you can go ham and free agency, uh, you know, what you need starters in the defense end position. So I'm. I'm excited for the Bills. I'm excited for the Bills and what they got going here. A very good job at the front office uh, there, you know, what they've done. So very impressive. Uh, the Panthers are next. Uh, about $30 million in cap space. 
they do have a lot of dead money too with uh, on top of having 30 million so that's really not a good look uh, at the moment and looking at their top free agents they got quite a few there's a bunch of guys that are kind of like tweener you know in between your guys because you know do you really need them back you might want them back but you might not so it's really on Matt Rule who I, I like that higher um, I, I like that higher very much but uh, Mario Addison was a pass rusher started off the year pretty hot got kind of cold uh, Gerald McCoy veteran defense alignment um, you know, we'll see what he has left in the tank. They also have Vernon Butler, who's an interior defensive lineman, uh, who finally started to pick it up. I, I think he fits the new scheme a bit. Uh, you possibly can get back him cheaper. Uh, James Bradbury, who I, I didn't like at corner up until this year. Early this year, he played pretty solid and started to get cold a little bit. Um, you know, the question with him is, do, do it's one of those guys who I think you you might have to overpay on, which I wouldn't do. I'd rather go to the draft and get a maybe a equally as good or better option for a lot cheaper. Darrell Williams, who's been known as been you know when healthy one of their better offense linemen over the years, uh, filled in for them at tackle and guards at times when they really really needed him. He's a he's a free agent. Uh, Ross Cockrell's a free agent. Bruce Irvin's a free agent. Kyle Allen is uh, exclusive restricted, so Kyle Allen will be back. And uh, you know, kind of the question is who's the quarterback? I, you know, I'm gonna assume it's Cam Newton. I believe in Cam Newton as long as he's healthy. Um, what I think should happen here with the Panthers looking at their situation, um, you know, even though I like Cam New, I think he should be back. You know, you could look to trade him, and I, I would actually, I would actually look into that. I would, I would look into going into a full rebuild. It's it would tough to go away from Cam Newton, but it, you know, if it was me, um, but you got this new coach in here. It's a guy that's known from building things from the ground up. You got a seven-year contract. There, there is a lot of holes in this team, and this one it wasn't really a surprise because I kind of said this in the offseason. I didn't think the Panthers would be that good because I thought they had a bunch of holes. They started off surprisingly good, and then it ended up going the way I thought it would. Um, there's a lot of holes in this team, that, you know, especially with the free agents. They, they need. I like Brian Burns, but they need more pass rushers that that are better. You know, they need more guys that that they need to get better there. They need defense alignment because there's a bunch of there's a free agent defense alignment. Uh, o line's the biggest need to me because they can use pretty much everything. Um, you know, Greg Little's gonna have to step up, but still, you need tackles, you need guards, you need pretty much everything there. Receiver, it's you know, it's DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. You know, you can get better. You know, it, it's pretty much DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel, but. Um, you know, in today's NFL, you want two DJ Moores out there. You, you you want really you don't even want another DJ Moore. You want a, a different type of style of receiver. You want a big body receiver in there. They miss Funches, and Funches is a mediocre receiver. So that kind of sums that up. Talked about D line because they have a bunch of free agents. Uh, quarterbacks a question mark. Really, after McCaffrey, he's only they're only running back. Um, they need basically everything. They need basically everything except for inside linebacker, which they locked up Keekley and Shaq Thompson. Um, that's my take on them. So I, I would kind of, I would, you know, bringing Matt Rule in here, I would kind of tear it down and let him bring it up. That's my thoughts on the Panthers at this moment. Some people will disagree, but I, I have strong feelings about that. Uh, next team, we're talking about Chicago Bears. Uh, Chicago Bears about $14 million in cash space. They actually, looking through it, they actually can uh, – Climb. They can climb up in that cap space, so we'll see what they do. Some cuts, some obvious cuts could be uh, – we expect them to make could actually get them, you know, when it's all said and done, even up to around $28 million. So that's, that's the good news about the Bears. The bad – I'd say if there was bad news, um, you're evaluating this team last year, it didn't feel like they had a whole bunch of needs. It was still kind of question marks. Is this going to be a need? Now it, it feels like they have a lot more needs now. Um, I still determine quarterback as their biggest need. You 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 think about what they what they did this year and where they struggled, the hole they got into that they, it, for a second it looked like they may dig themselves out, but you know not really. But the hole they got into, you know, to me falls on the quarterback play. I know Trubisky did get hurt at one point, but the quarterback play has to be much much better. A lot of blame going to Nagy, which he deserves some blame. Um, but you know at the same time, I kind of want to side with Nagy because there's a lot of times where you you see it it was hard to game plan in call plays in that offense where he really had no downfield ability there was, it was it was a limited offense you know and, and you know even Trubisky you know he kind of felt that he could run this RPO at one point and then he kind they kind of had to slow down off that because he wasn't doing too well there you know I, I think quarterback is their biggest need that, that's the number one thing that's going to make this team play better uh, and that was kind of their weakest spot the bad news is you know, as of now, do they have the cash space to sign a free agent quarterback? There's a couple good ones they would like. There's there's a couple other good ones, but that wouldn't fit. So there's really only a couple for them, and they may have to overspend or not be able to spend. Uh, and then the draft, 
without having a first rounder, they're sitting in a very tricky spot. So with that being said, Mitchell Trubisky could be their quarterback to start next year. I know Ryan Pace came out and said that, but if you ask any GM right now who their quarterback's going to be next year, he's going to say the, their current quarterback that's under contract. So that, that's really not telling me anything. I'm not saying he's not going to be the quarterback, but people overreacted from that big time, big time. Um, their second biggest need to me is edge rush because you have m- the best pass pass rusher and the best maybe defensive player in all of football in Khalil Mack. And I don't want to say he's going to waste because he was a big time player last year, even though his stats weren't where you know productivity wasn't where you you want him to be. But he won them games sometimes single handedly. Um, but he, it almost feels like. He's not being used to his full abilities when he's by himself out there. Leonard Floyd has been just plain and simple disappointing. He's been picking up in the run game, but you got to get after the quarterback, and he certainly has not done that. They absolutely need another pass rusher. Uh, Tight end, pretty obvious one. Uh, Trey Burton, not happy with him, honestly, because he's been sitting out for a different reason. Minor injuries and anxiety, I don't like that. I would cut him. Um, You're only going to save about a million, I believe, if you cut him, and I think they like him for the offense, but... Uh, and other than that, yeah, not too much tight end. So they need another tight end. You know, if there was a fourth one, I think they need another offense lineman. But I think it's one starting offense lineman. You're pretty much going to need to stick with your your two tackles who were pretty good last year. This year, not so much. Yes, there were some injuries. Um, you're not going to really find better than those. So I think maybe late in the draft, you need depth at the tackle position. Really, they only need one starting guard. Uh, to me, because you have Whitehair and Daniels. Once they switch, swap those guys back to their correct position, what they had last year, the line started to play better. Um, I think they just need one guard. That's what they need. So that's really not going to make or break the team. Um, so those are, to me, are definitely the biggest needs. Uh, looking at their free agents, um, two inside linebackers, and there is a reason I have Kwiatkowski ranked ahead of Trevathan there, ahead of Trevathan. I think it's more of a priority to get Kwiatkowski back uh, because it's gonna be he's going to be a lot cheaper. He's younger. He honestly played better than him this year, too. Trevathan did get hurt. Um, but I think they can let Trevathan walk. I, I think that would be the smart decision. You know, with the limited cap, uh, you go the cheaper and the better route, I, in my opinion, the younger route too. Uh, Clinton Dix, I think they let walk. Uh, he did not have a good year. You know, they had Eddie Jackson kind of going. Eddie Jackson played great again, not as good as last year because they kind of had him doing even more, kind of going out of his comfort zone, playing. He was play, pretty. It felt like he was playing safety by himself a lot of times. So I think they kind of look elsewhere for the safety position, maybe a cheaper option for free agency that's better than Clinton Dix, which is doable. Nick Williams kind of came out of nowhere. He played pretty pretty well. They actually have a lot of free agents too. Sherrick McManus is a big-time special teamers, team player for them. They would definitely like to get him back. Chase, uh, Chase Daniel. I think they look for their, you know, a more of a fit for their back of quarterback. So I think they let him walk. A couple linemen, you know, Cornelius Lucas and Coward, uh, guys that stepped up for them. They could look to bring that, them back cheap. And Pierre Lewis, another guy that, that filled in at the linebacker position. I think they would like to have Wachowski and Pierre Lewis back instead of Trevathan. Um, and then Roy Roberts and Harris, uh, who was solid for them. I think they would want him to be a rotation guy for them. Um, so look, yeah, looking at that, back to like the needs. I I think they need a pass rusher really bad. A problem with that is the good news is the free agency class is good. The bad news is do you have enough cap to get one of the good guys? And then the you know the next bad news is uh, if you don't have a first round pick in this draft class, the pass rush, specifically the three four outside linebacker position, is pretty weak without a first rounder. So yeah, the the Bears have a little more needs than I once expected. And yeah, they're in a bit of a situation there with the cast base, but again, I think they can, you know, they can work that up. Uh, you know, what I'm really looking forward to seeing, obviously, the quarterback situation is the most interesting point, but that linebacker spot, you know, if they spend more on Trevath and then Kwiatkowski, I'm not going to be too happy with them, honestly. Um, so that's something to look out for there. Um, I think they'll look tight ends an interesting, you know, topic. I think they'll look to uh to to the draft, to the draft for for a tight end. You know, I don't think they want to overspend. I think they would like to have Hooper. I don't think they're going to be able to. I think they would like to have Henry, but you know, it's a it's a risky guy because of his injury. Ebron to me is is not at all a fit. Um so I think they'll look to the draft there. On to the next team, the Bengals, 54 million in cap space available. Biggest needs quarterback, offensive line, corner, but at the same time, um they have needs in a lot of spots. Let's be honest here. They have needs needs in a lot of spot in a lot of spots. Andy Dalton's actually not a free agent. Some people were just 
you know, talk about him like he's free agent. Not a free agent, but they could move on from him. Um, but they need a quarterback, which they should fill with the first overall pick. Offensive line. Offensive line might not be as bad as people think. It was very bad this year, don't get me wrong, but they a very good draft pick in Jonah Williams last year. Really a guy that can play guard where we expect him to, where we expect him to play or tackle. Um, they have some young guys that, that have been disappointing, but we think could step up. So really, it's still a need, but maybe not quite as bad as people think going forward. Corner, that's a big need to me. You know, they, they need starting corners. I do like William Jackson, but um, you know they, they need some other guys there too. A.J. Green's a free agent. Tyler Eifert's a free agent. Andrew Billings, Darquez Denard. Um, really, I'm okay if they let all those guys walk. I, I think actually Eifert is pretty good if he's healthy. For the most part, he stayed healthy this year, so that's kind of the good thing. A.J. Green, I know Bengals fans want him back. Uh, depends on the price because, I mean, another guy that has the injury risk to him. Andrew Billings, really just a run-stopping D-tackle, and at that, you know, not the best, uh, but solid. So, I mean, if you want him back, maybe maybe you can get him back cheap. Uh, you can let Denard walk too. So the kind of the good thing is, you know, fifty-four million is a lot compared to some of these other teams. Ridiculous. So they have they have an insane amount. Um, but the, yeah, the good news is they don't really absolutely have to spend it on their own guys. They can go out and get better with the draft and free agency. Uh, so we'll see what they do. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, I mean, the Bengals can have a, they're in prime position. Take Joe Burrow, uh, build the offensive line. It should get better by default, anyways. Next year, as long guys are healthy. I think they've drafted okay on defense actually over over the years. You know they could have done better, but you know I I like guys like Jesse Bates, William Jackson. I think Jermaine Pratt can step up. Um, you know Sam Hubbard could step up. You know I, there's some guys in there that can play. I think they could use another pass rusher. You know not as big of a needs as these guys, uh, these positions up here, but. Uh, they're already in that rebuild situation, so it's not a team we can sit here and knock because of it. You know, we already know they're kind of in that situation. Uh, the Browns are next, fifty-one million in cap, decent amount for the Browns, given that they do have some talent, but doesn't really translate to the field as of last year, at least. Uh, free agents Joe Schober, I think, is a must for them to get back, and they can do that uh, with their current cap space. Kareem Hunt, they would like back. You know, it's good to have that duo in there that are pretty even. Yeah, Nick Chubb is towards the top of the NFL in rushing yards. Uh, and so he's been their feature back, but you could argue based on what we've seen from Kareem Hunt in the NFL that Kareem Hunt could be their better back, actually, uh, and is very well involved in, in the pass game. Uh, but I think somebody will pay more than the Browns will pay. That's my initial thoughts on that. Maybe the Browns can pay up. Uh, Demarius Randall's a free agent. I think it's a guy you can let walk, honestly. Uh, pretty solid option in the, in the secondary. Rashard Higgins, it's not like a priority to bring him back. A solid depth uh, rotation receiver. So the good thing is you can kind of focus on Schobert if you think, uh, you know, if Hunt's not going to cost something ridiculous, which if there's a team that desperately, desperately needs a running back, they could actually pay up for Hunt. So, um, and then the top three needs would be offensive line, mainly offensive tackle, in my opinion, but they can use pretty much anything. Safety is a huge need, in my opinion. Demarius Randall's a free agent. They need it anyways. And then defense vend. You know, I, Miles Garrett's going to be one of the best, um, but. Never was a huge fan of Vernon, obviously, especially the recent years. Uh, and he's, you know, getting up there in age. I don't know necessarily think he's a great fit for them either. Uh, they def if they can find somebody else, you know, close to as good as Miles Garrett, even that's a big upgrade to me. Uh, so that is their third biggest need, in my opinion. The good news is, uh, yeah, not fifty-one million is a pretty good number. Um, really, the only priority is Joe Schobert, and really the only priority in terms of needs. Um, you know, the absolute must I'm talking about is offensive line and, and you know, maybe multiple and, and safety. So that, that's kind of a good thing there for the Browns. Not the, not the best situation, but a pretty good thing in my opinion. The Cowboys. Inter the Cowboys, very interesting team here. You see that $84 million. You talk. You already heard me if you, if you listen about the Bills. I raved about the Bills when they had $88 million, but this is where the number doesn't really mean a whole bunch. It mattered for the Bills. Um, it, it's good for the Cowboys, but this is not necessarily a good thing. Um, and it's because of who their free agents are and how many they have. Um, they got Dak Prescott. Obviously, worst case scenario, franchise tag. It's never great to stick the franchise tag on your quarterback. They're they're going to spend a lot of money keeping Dak Prescott. Um, Amari Cooper. They're going to spend money to make sure they get him back. They're going to spend a lot of money. Byron Jones is their best corner. We'll see if they bring him back. They're going to have some money left over still. But do you want to go and spend all of it? Robert Quinn was actually their best pass. Is he their best pass rusher? No, absolutely not. Demarcus Lawrence is, but Robert Quinn was their best pass rusher this year. Um, so you see, 
and I'm not even done, actually. Uh, you got Michael Bennett, which uh, I'd say they probably won't bring back. Uh, both Randall Cobb and Tavon Austin are free agents. Jason Witten's a free agent. He could be done. Sean Lee's a free agent. They could walk from Darian Thompson. I thought was pretty solid at times for them at the safety position. Um, they could bring back uh, Blake Jarwin, who seems to be more of a solid option for Dak in terms of their tight end. Malik Collins. Uh, is a free agent. Anthony Brown's a free agent. I mean, there's more, but these are the top guys. We're not going to sit here and list off every single guy here. Um, that money will be spent on their own guy. Own guys there. Most of their own guys. Not necessary. It's a good thing to have the cap so you're able to sign your, your best players, but it's not necessarily a good thing because we could be looking at pretty much the same Cowboys going into the season or going into the draft, I should say, uh, maybe they choose to not bring back Robert Quinn. He had a good season, but it was kind of one of those seasons where I don't think we're gonna repeat, he's going to repeat that. It's not like a fluke season, but I don't think he's going to repeat that. You could get better at pass rush. DeMarcus Lawrence has got to play better, bottom line. Uh, Byron Jones, you want to bring him back. If you don't, what are the odds that you, I mean, you're going to need a corner pretty bad, and what are the odds he's better than Byron Jones? We, we could be looking at a basically equal level Cowboys next year or going into the draft. The draft can make you better. So the $84 million is a good thing, but then after looking at everything, I'd say not so fast in terms of um, you know, making a huge jump. Another good thing is, though, they had a good enough team to make the playoffs, I thought, or to win, I should say, to win the NFC East. They had enough talent to be the best team in the NFC East, but evaluating this, looking at their free agents, they actually have more needs than I originally thought. Um, receiver, to me, is their biggest need. They bring in Mike McCarthy. He's known to pass the ball a lot. When he's had success, he's had a very, I'd say, elite receiver group back in the past and, and an elite passing game. You can do that with Dak Prescott. You can do that with Amari Cooper. You need to sign those guys, but you also need more receivers. Gallup's pretty good. I like him. He, he can be... You know, in a McCarthy offense, I'd say I want him to be my number three receiver. Um, but you also need a number two. Even let's say he's number two, you also need a number three, a number four. You need a lot of good receivers. You can do that in the draft. Um, they also this receiver unit also led the NFL in drops, thirty eight. That can't happen. You know, even though Gallup showed promise, Cooper was great at times. They had some bad drops. Um, so they they definitely need a receiver in my opinion. Cornerback Byron Jones, a free agent. Even after that, they need better play. Safety that's kind of been an obvious one that they need a safety. I think people overreact from it. I don't think it's on the level of receiver or corner. And looking down the line, like I said, and they need our pass rusher. I think guys like Dorrance Armstrong can step up. To me, they need interior D linemen. Um, you know, maybe some young guys can step up there, but they need interior D linemen. They're good at offensive line. They're good at running back. Um, you know, so they have more needs than I thought. They have the cap space, but they're going to spend have to spend on their own guys. So it's an interesting situation for the Cowboys upcoming. I'll uh, we'll see if they want to let guys walk. Uh, next team is the Broncos, sixty three million cap space, pretty good number. Uh, but they actually have, you know, the Broncos are one of those teams that have um, quite the impact free agents. Not necessarily a bad thing here because they're in position to get them back. Justin Simmons was a top tier safety this year. Um, I think he'll get a lot of money. It's a tricky one because he's been pretty good, but kind of this year was his kind of his breakout year. So does he get judged off this year? Does he get judged off the? I think the Broncos are in a good position to get him back and not make him. You know, every time we see a top tier safety hit the market, um, we kind of expect them to be the highest paid or close. I think he can be somewhat close, but I think the Broncos are in a good position to get him back. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, franchise tag. Shelby Harris was a monster this year. They would definitely like him back. Uh, Chris Harris, I think they can let Chris Harris walk, perhaps. Uh, Derek Wolf, another defensive lineman, but it, the list uh, kind of goes on to, I mean, you got guys like um, Ronald Leary, who actually has a, um, it's a team option, so we'll see if they want the Broncos want to bring him back. Jeremy Atachu, who actually stepped up for for them at linebacker this year. Uh, Gotsis, another defense lineman. Mike Parcell, another guy that stepped out of nowhere for the, from the defense line. Tim Patrick, free agents. So, yeah, you know, they, they could use their money to bring back their own guys. The good news, it's young guys that are getting better. Uh, it's a team, you know, once they were put together, started to get better last year. Um, you know, I think they need receiver pretty bad. It's pretty much Cortland Sutton. They have other guys that step up. You know, I believe in Deshaun Hamilton. Tim Patrick's a free agent, but... You can definitely get better. A pair of guys, you know, with Cortland Sutton for Drew Locke, I think it's a good thing. Uh, cornerback, Chris Harris, a free agent, but even with him, they definitely need to get better on the outside there. They definitely need to get better at the cornerback position. And offensive line, um, you know, the question, do you replace Garrett Bowles? Because he's played pretty solid at times, um, and you could use another guard. Um, so, I mean, they could use a tackle guard, but I think those other are bigger needs. And you could throw a defensive line up here because of how many free agent defensive linemen there are. You know, I would like to think with their current cap space, 
they're able to keep some of these guys, bring them back. But defense line, as we sit, is actually a huge need because of the amount of free agents. Um, based on how they played this year, it's not a need. But based on who the free agents are, yes, it, it's a big need. So um, they're going to have to spend money on their own guy, their own guys. You know, it's a good thing they, that they can. Uh, but I don't know if we'll see a much, much different Broncos team uh, going into the draft. Kind of like the Cowboys. Uh, I like the Broncos situation actually a little more. I'm not saying they're better than the Cowboys or they're not better. I'm not here to make that decision right now. Um, but I like it a little more, but it's a similar situation. Detroit Lions. $49 million in cap space. Top free agents. They got Tavon Wilson, who it's a guy I think you can let walk, but Patricia liked to use him a bit. Uh, you know, he's kind of um, you know, a weapon at safety, I guess. They use him in different ways, but they, they do have uh, you know Tracy Walker. They drafted Will Harris, who they like. Uh, Ashawn Robinson's been an interior D lineman for them. He's been solid, but it's not like a must-bring-back guy. Rashawn Melvin, uh, you know, starting corner, I think a pretty good tackling corner. Uh, another one that's, yeah, maybe you would like him back, but not a must. Graham Glasgow, um, who I actually I think out of these guys, where, where they should there be they should be set on their priorities. I think they should bring him back. Um, they also have Danny Amendola, not really a must to bring back, getting up there in age. And then Mike Daniels, who really wasn't an impact for them, so I think they'll let him walk. Um, so the good news is they, they don't absolutely have to. Re- there's no like big-time free agents of their own. Uh, the bad news is, after evaluating this roster, I was surprised to see how many more holes they had. Um, they, how many more holes they have than I once thought, really. Um, they, they need... Interior D line, they probably they need two starters really. They need another pass rusher. Um, you know that their pass rush wasn't where they wanted to be. They have Trey Flowers. You know Okwara's okay. They need another starter in my opinion. Um, you know they definitely need another corner at least one. They they Tabon Wilson they, they like. He's a free agent. Offensive line, I think they can use a. I think they can use a guard actually. I think guard's a big need for them. Looking at running, to, I didn't. Have, I wasn't able to list running back in their top three needs. I think it's a big need. Carry on Johnson can't stay healthy. Other than that, you don't have too much. I think that's a huge need. Receiver, I love Kenny Galladay. Marvin Jones, I like. He's got to stay healthy. After that, they got nothing. The receiver is a huge need, and I'm not able to list some of those. So, D line, like I said, guard, like I said, cornerback. I mean, they they have a lot. Of, this team has a lot of needs, and it's kind of surprising because uh, they were when Stafford was healthy, they were pretty good. They're high powered offense, so. Um, they have to be 100% certain that Stafford could stay healthy. So that's like kind of the one, the first situation you have to break down. And then um, if he is, your best bet is being an offensive team. So kind of build up that offense, running back, receiver, like I said, guard. Um, So that's kind of the key, but they have a lot of holes. And what Stafford kind of beat up, this is a team that I would consider if I was in there, you know, putting them, you know, tearing it down, put it in rebuild mode, see if you can trade Stafford. I really do because – um, 49 million is a good number, but, uh, it needs to be a bigger number for the needs they have. So, um, it's tough though, because they look like they're going to be able to compete early portion of the year, but it's a tough situation. They, they do have some holes. It's a tough situation, but they can compete if everyone's healthy and they do free agency, right? So, um, it's a possibility to turn it around here, but are they going to be out? The goal is Super Bowl. Are they going to be able to, if everyone's healthy and they get some free agency signs, good draft, it's not, you know, is it going to be a Super Bowl team in the next two or three so years, like when you, where you, you know, where it needs to be, really? You know, the questions, the answer is probably no. Um, so it's almost like they almost got to tear it down a bit, and that, that's kind of my thoughts. But I don't disagree with them if they, if they don't do it, really. Uh, the Packers are next, thirty-seven million in cap space, pretty good number. It's not the biggest number; it's a pretty good number because they're still left in the playoffs. You know, um, it's a, it's a good team. They do have some free agents. Brian Balaga, right tackle, been playing a high level uh, most of his career and this year. Blake Martinez, uh, you know, probably their better inside linebacker, but it's a spot they can get better at. You know, B.J. Goodson being the other one. Uh, Kyler Fackrell, um, solid, I guess, weapon. You know, they move him inside, outside. He kind of rushes the passer a bit. Was better last year than this year uh, because they kind of upgraded. Uh, pretty good weapon player, but uh, not necessarily. They don't necessarily need him back. Uh, Mason Crosby, the kicker's a free agent. <clears throat> and then a couple of guys, Alan Lazard has actually stepped up for them, and even Shannon Sullivan at times, but both those guys are exclusive restricted free agents, so they should be back. Um, interesting. Uh, well, first, I think their biggest need is receiver. It's pretty much Devontae Adams out there. They, yes, I, I'm aware they have other guys that can't. they can play, I guess, but they can get much, much, much better and help the offense out in general. 
Uh, linebacker, we talked about that. They, they can use an upgrade inside linebacker. And on top of that, both the guys are free agents. And right tackle, Brian Balaga is a free agent. And he's getting up there in age. He has the injury concern, even though he's been, for the most part, healthy this year compared to the other years. They kind of want to re- – even, even if they bring back Balaga, they, the Packers are very good at making sure – they have the offense lineman in place. See them do it with Elgin Jenkins this year. They see, we've seen them do it in the past. So they're, they're going to draft offense lineman, maybe sign them free agency. Uh, so that could be the third biggest need. But not a whole bunch of gigantic needs for the Packers. Pretty good situation. Uh, and their defense is improving because the free agency, the offseason they had last year um, on the defense side of the ball. So it's kind of going back to getting that offense going again. Uh, the Houston Texans cap space, uh, a pretty good number in $62 million. Um, but they, they do have some free agents. I don't say I wouldn't say any of them are must though, but they do have some needs. You know they're still alive in the playoffs, but they do they do have some needs. Lamar Miller, you know I, I think is their favorite back. Still, I'm not saying they're going to bring him back, but that could be their key free agent. Bradley Roby played pretty well for them. I think they'll re-sign him, and then a couple interior D linemen, DJ Reader, Brandon Dunn. I think they can bring a guy like Reader back. They do have some young guys, guys like Omenahu, uh, that could step up uh, for them. He already stepped up in his rookie year. Other guys, Carlos Hyde, obviously was a key for them this year, but I think you can get better in that category. Jonathan Joseph, and they can let Walk getting up there in age. Jalila Die, uh, their safety, they could bring back for the right price. And Darren Fells, same. They, you know, I wouldn't overspend on a guy like that. They could get better at the position, and they have some young guys as well there. Um, so, to me, I think they need a pass rusher pretty bad. There's, you know, it, it's it comes in kind of spurts for them. They definitely need another pass rusher, uh, running back. I think they need a running back. Um, you know. They definitely need better running game, and you got Lamar Miller and Carlos Hyde are both free agents. I think you can get better. I think you can get better than both of them. You got the money, and you got the draft. Uh, D line, JJ Watt getting up there in age, still playing at a high level and healthy, but that's kind of the question: Is he going to be healthy? So I think they need another D lineman, and they have some free agents, like I said. Um, but sixty-two million. You know, I'm, as I'm talking about it, I like the situation more and more because sixty-two million is a good good number. Uh, and they don't absolutely have. I- I'd say Bradley Roby is kind of the first one to bring back there. Uh, other than that, they don't. There's, you know, they can go spend and make this a, a better team. They have a real opportunity, and they're already a playoff team. So I kind of like the situation there. Next team is the Colts, a whopping ninety-two million. And I, I would, I, I yeah, you got to applaud. You got to applaud them for not going out and spending your know, last free agency just to spend. And I kind of was saying that at the time. You know, don't overspend on guys. Um, there, there was there were rumored to be in guys like Tyrell Williams and Landon Collins, and good job not overspending on those guys. Um, so that's that's the good news. Ninety two million, big big number. Um, you know, I guess if there was bad news, that there are more needs than I than I originally thought for the Colts. They they can use pretty much anything, honestly. Um, you know, minus maybe running back off. You know, they do have Anthony Costanzo as a top free agent. I, I think with ninety two million, it's safe to say he will be back. Um, so they don't really know, need offensive line after that. Uh, I think they're okay at corner. It's not the best group, but it's a good young group that's getting better. Uh, but a- after that, I think they can use pretty much anything. I-, I have D-line as their biggest need. It was tough for me to put D-line or D-N specifically in there. What with D-line? They pretty much can use the whole whole thing there. Um, it's a weird team because they got guys that are kind of like, do they do they fit their defense? Like Justin Houston, I think fits more as a, as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Um, Jabal Sheard, another free agent. I don't think they'll bring him back. I don't know if he knows what he is. I've seen him play better in different schemes. I really don't know. Um, and then you got, I mean, you drafted, you drafted some guys, but then you got like a guy like Tyquan Lewis, who was an edge guy at Ohio State. They're trying at the three technique. Looked pretty good last year, not this past year so much though. Danico Autry, kind of the guy they move around. You know, one week he looks really good, one week he's you know non-existent. So they got a lot of guys like that. It's kind of weird, you know. I, I don't think they've done a good job finding actual fits. Uh, even they draft Benagu, who's extremely athletic, could be good. But I don't know if uh, – it almost – yeah, I, they don't even know what kind of scheme they're going for. That's kind of what it feels like right now. So uh, I think they need D-Lyman in general. Better fits in to be specific. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, receiver, T.Y. Hilton. I've always liked T.Y. Hilton getting up there in age. Uh, not really – you know, not really a sure thing to stay healthy anymore. Other than that, you know, I like Pascal. Um, Paris Campbell should be okay, but, you know, you definitely can get better. You might need to find your number one receiver of the future. And then quarterback, Brissett, I think it's just a game-managing quarterback. I mean, he even can turn the ball over a little bit. Uh, not enough explosive play. 
Um, so I think they do need a quarterback too. But not, the great news is $92 million. Uh, it's smart. They never under, overspent. They have a bit some, some needs though. They have a good amount of needs here. Uh, next, we got the Jaguars. Negative $1 million in cap space. I expect that to go up. We'll see what they make the decision with uh, with Nick Foles. Um, you know, I, people are kind of ripping that too early. I, I think Nick, Nick Foles can play. I think it's hard to judge off this year. Um, we'll see what their decision is going forward, though. Uh, in terms of free agents, good news is they don't really have to bring any of them back besides, you know, I think the must is Yannick Ngakwe. Which, uh, based off his social media, he th- kind of sounds like he wants to go elsewhere. But that's just based on that guy's kind of are emotional at times when it comes to that. Doesn't really mean much. Uh, that's that they already said they want that to be their priority. So we'll see where they. I think he's gonna want too much money though. I I don't want anybody or them to overspend. Um, they don't have the money to spend right now, anyways. Uh, you know, in terms of re-signing your own guy, you definitely can go in more into the negative though. That's okay. Uh, it's not necessarily okay, but you can do it. Uh, and you can franchise tag, of course. Uh, they have huge needs on defense, actually. Uh, linebacker is a gigantic need that you know they need guys to pair with uh, Miles Jack. We'll see what Telvin Smith wants to do. Um, defensive line, interior defense line, big time. They need it right now. And Marcel Darius is a free agent as well. Don't think they want to bring him back, and that's fine. Cornerback, it's pretty much just Bouye out there. So they need a corner. I do think they need a receiver too. I don't think they have. DJ Chark looked pretty good, but I don't know if they have a top-tier number one receiver, which I think every team in today's NFL needs. Um, so I, I'd prefer DJ Chark as a receiver, too. They have other guys that can play. I'm not extremely thrilled with them. You know, guys like D.D. Westbrook, you know, I think he's a good three, maybe, receiver. Um, so they have some needs at the same time of not having the cap space, which I expect them to get in the positive, no problem, not by a long shot, but they'll make some moves, so... Not the best situation for the Jacks, obviously. Uh, the Chiefs, $22 million. They do have a lot of dead cap, which I don't like, but the good thing is they're a good team. Uh, they don't m- need to make a whole bunch of moves. Um, you know, $22 million is not bad for being a good team. But we see a star in the free agent column. Chris Jones is, uh, is a stud, and they're going to need him back, and I think they'll get him back. Worst-case scenario, franchise tag. Kendall Fuller, though, like bad. Brashard Breland, Brashard Breland has played pretty Solid for them at times. They could get better at the cornerback position. That's obvious. Terrell Suggs um, could be just kind of like a kind of got that rental feeling right now. You know, it could be that. Um, cornerback is their biggest need. Pretty obvious. I think running back. I think you can argue running backs their biggest need because kind of like I talked about with other teams. Uh, you know, they they are an offense team. They're they're gonna win based on offense. So the, their key to winning is their offense needs to be elite every time they go out in the field. Uh, and they're kind of what they're lacking is a better running game right now. So I think they can go out and find a better running back that can make them that much better. But corner is a huge need. And linebacker, you know, they don't they don't have a whole bunch of giant needs. I'd say corner and running back are pretty big needs, but uh, they, they could use another linebacker. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Chiefs, not, nothing surprising. They're in a pretty solid situation. I don't like their dead money. They got a decent amount of dead money, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, just get back, Chris Jones. Please do so. Uh, the Chargers are next. Uh, 56 million is a good number. It's a pretty good number. The bad news is they have a lot of key free agents there. Um, this this upcoming off season, obviously. So they have uh, Schofield. I think is another one that I don't have listed. And uh, Adrian Phillips, Isaac Rochelle. Uh, you know, guys like guys like that. Uh, you know, maybe guys they can get back for for cheaper. Right? Schofield. I mean. I feel like it's it's a tough one because the, what do they want to do this offense line? They got some young guys that can play, but it's not obviously right tackle is the biggest need. I mean that's obvious, but it's not where they want it to be all the way across the board. So what do they want to do? You know, do you want to bring a guy like Schofield back? Do you want to, you know, do you want to almost rebuild it? But they have some young guys they drafted over years. It's a tricky situation, but really, I think they get away with just kind of filling that big need at right tackle. Other big time free agents who I think their number one free agent is Austin Eckler. I think it's a must to bring him back. Um, I, you know Hunter Henry. I think they want to bring back too. The injuries scare me, but they definitely want to bring him back for that offense. And then Melvin Gordon. You no, know, they. It seems like they like him better than Eckler. I, I don't know why. It's gonna be very interesting to see what they decide there. And Philip Rivers. I think they'd rather go Tyrod Taylor. So I don't think Philip Rivers will be back. So. They have some free agents, but I don't know if they really have to spend big. I would spend big on Eckler. I like Austin Eckler a lot, especially for this offense. Um, right tackle, and I have to list running back because both their running backs are free agents. And then quarterback, 
um, given that Ty- Tyrod Taylor is really their only quarterback that's capable of starting right now on their roster, and I think that's kind of the route they'll go. They could look to a good backup, but then mainly uh, a future quarterback in the draft, a very good possibility, but they may want to focus on that offensive line, you know, that right tackle specifically spot in the draft of their first pick. Uh, so we'll see here. I, again, I can't stress enough. I, I want Eckler back. I, I want him back on that team. That That's kind of where the priorities got to got to be at. They do have some key free agents, but they do have $56 million in cap space there. So let's we'll see what they decide to do. The Rams at $21 million in cap space. They still, Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey wants to be extended. Surprised it hasn't got done yet. Hopefully he's not pulling anything interesting, which is very possibility because we've seen it before. <clears throat> Top three needs, um, I think offense line in general. In, in general, I think guard play compared to, this, you know, looking at this year, guard play has got to be better. Uh, but Whitworth is Whitworth's their their maybe their best tackle, and he's a free agent. So, offensive line in general, offense line in general, uh, outside linebacker. You got a guy like Dante Fowler, he's a free agent, and you don't really have a whole bunch other than that. You know, Clay Matthews, you can't even be expecting a whole bunch from him anymore. And you know, even if you have Fowler and Clay Matthews out there, you definitely need to get better still. And then Fowler's a free agent on top of it, so that's a big need to me. And then defensive line is pretty much Aaron Donald. You know, Brockers is also a free agent. And it's pretty much just Aaron Donald. In terms of pass rush, D-line and outside linebacker in their 3-4, which they could switch because Wade Phillips is gone. So maybe it should say D-end. And we really don't know based on what they're gonna do, what their scheme's going to be. But uh, And then Greg Zerline, you know, they're their big-time kicker. They're going to need back as well. Uh, and then Brockers and then Blake Bortles actually a free agent as well. Uh, but they have some needs there. They, they have quite a bit of needs. Uh, and it's not a good situation. Let me, let me get down to it. It's not a good situation because you need pretty much everything on the offensive line. I think you need at least one starting uh, pass rusher. I think you you need other D linemen to help Aaron Donald out while Brockers is a free agent. He's hasn't played that great. Um, all of that at the same time of your own free agents. A guy like Corey Littleton is a must to bring back. That's where the priority's got to be, I think. Uh, at the same time, having Whitworth, Zerline, Fowler, uh, free agents, you have twenty one million in cap. So. What are they? What are they going to do? They're going to they're going to choose to bring mainly their guys back. They're going to look to do a little bit of both. It's a tricky situation. You know, at least they have, do have some cap in the twenty one million. See if they can clear some. Uh, the Dolphins with a whopping ninety eight million, a league most ninety eight million in cap space. Uh, free agents. It's really only they. You know, they really don't have any top free agents. Honestly, um, T- Talib can play still. They may want to bring him back. It's great if they can. Whatever. If not. Other than that, they can pretty much let everybody walk if they want to bring some guys back to be rotation guys uh, for cheap. That that's fine. Uh, mainly, we're going to focus here is uh, ninety eight million cap. They do have a lot of dead uh, dead money, but um, not a big deal with the ninety eight million cap. Uh, but you can go fill the needs. And very interesting. I'm going to get ripped for it. Quarterbacks not listed as top three needs. It is a need. They can. I'm not saying they they shouldn't or won't get a quarterback draft one early, uh, but to me it's not a top three need. Why? Because they need everything on the offense line. They don't even have a running back in my in my mind. Um, they need a running back very very badly. Uh, in defensive end, their pass rush is absolutely non-existent. If you fill those needs, among others, you can win with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. I'm not saying that's what they should do. I'm not saying that's what they're gonna gonna do. Yeah, I don't think you can win with the current offense line. I don't think you can win with your current starting running back. I don't think you can win with no pass rushers. You can win with Ryan Fitzpatrick if you fill around him. So I'm not saying they're going to do that or should do it. But if they do go that route, they kind of just focus on everything first. And maybe the quarterback comes in the future, which they can focus on everything and quarterback. But I think they can win games. So I think they're sitting in a pretty good situation. They have a lot of needs. That's not a great situation. Uh, but they don't really need to, see, need to sign any of their current free agents, and they have $98 million in cap space. So I, I think for given that we know the Dolphins are in rebuild mode, it, it's, a good, it's a very good situation. The Vikings, negative $2 million, obviously is pretty much the complete opposite. It's a very bad situation, negative $2 million. Um, looking at their free agents, it doesn't look so good either because these are some good guys here. Anthony Harris may have played like the best safety in football this year. He, co- he happens to be a free agent. Everson Griffin, who's a starting defensive end for them. Trey Waynes has been their best cornerback for them. Mackenzie Alexander has been their best nickel corner for them. They also have Dan Baylor, their kicker, who they would like to bring back. C.J. Ham, who is their stud fullback. Steven Weatherly, who's a rotation defense lineman. Eric Wilson, who is a current starting linebacker, even though they don't use him most of the game. They go with two linebackers most of the game. And then Jerron Curse, who's been a key rotation guy for them. 
A lot of good free agents with negative $2 million in cap space. Bad. That's bad, but here's some good news. That they're... They're going to be able to create some room. They're going to, they may cut some guys. Uh, you know, Riley Reef could be on the way out. And they're actually a good good news is they drafted some guys. I've heard they're very confident in some young guys stepping up in, in the offensive line positions there. Um, so they may not have to be big spenders, which I don't think they can be anyways. But in that uh, category, uh, I believe they will extend Kirk Cousins actually because uh, his contract's going to be up at, you know, he's going to be a free agent next year, not this year, next year. I need to extend that another year, maybe two maximum. And what that will do is um, they'll shift some of that money, um, you know, backload a little bit. So that will create cap space now. It, it, they actually could create a, a, a good amount. So I am very confident they won't be in the negative, really not too close. They won't have a lot of cap space by any means. Uh, but that could be the good thing there, that they can create some cap space. Uh, the bad news, you know, I think half the Vikings f- fan base, I think the fan base is split. Half of them don't like Kirk Cousins. So the bad news for some of those guys, yeah, y- you're going to have them for more years. I believe, I truly believe they'll extend him. Uh, Anthony Harris is the absolute must. Um, they have the best safety duo on football. Uh, Anthony Harris, like I said, could have been the best safety this year. So I think worst case, they franchise tag him. The bad news, I, I think Everson Griffin could be gone. Uh, you know, you know, as a Vikings fan, it's going to be sad to see him gone. Um, Odenic Bow looked real good. That looks like a good real replacement, so they actually may be okay. Um, but maybe Griffin wants to take a hometown discount there. Trey Wayne's been their best corner, so they may want him back, but can they pay him? I think they can replace Alexander, even though he's been their be- best nickel. I think they can definitely replace him. I think guys, um, I think they can get Dan Bailey back cheap, CJ Han back cheap. Uh, I think they can get Weatherly back cheap. Uh, Jerron Curse, I, I think somebody will pay him to be a starting safety for them, as they should. So I, I can almost guarantee Jerron Curse will be gone. Um, corners, their biggest need, looking at Trey Waynes being a free agent. Uh, Rhodes, not, they, they can create space by getting rid of Rhodes. Uh, Zimmer's kind of stuck to Rhodes, it feels like, though. So maybe not. They do have Hughes, but I think their biggest need is corner. Even if they bring Trey Waynes back, they need another starting corner. Look to the draft for that. I think receiver is a giant need. I was preaching that before this season as well because they have two. They have two wide receivers. They have Stephon Diggs and they have Adam Thielen, who also, both of them, could get hurt at any time. We've seen that. So I think I think a bigger need than everyone else thinks. I think receiver is a giant need. Um, and then defensive line, uh, interior wise, that they need they need interior defense linemen pretty bad. Linval Joseph ain't the same. He used to be very good, uh, and then the rest of they they got good depth at D line, but that's what it feels like. It's just depth, you know. They need another starting defense alignment. Um, so yeah, those are the biggest needs to me. Um, you know, the good thing is about being in the negative right now is that they they've locked up their top tier players that they needed to lock up. That is the reason they're there. You know, they've locked up the the Daniel Hunter, the Harrison Smiths. Um, you know, the Eric Kendricks, the Anthony Bars, the, you know, we can keep going on. They've, they've locked the receivers. They, they locked up those guys. So that, that's the reason they're there. There's a legitimate reason why they're there. Um, they got to get Anthony Harris back. That guy played out of his mind this year. Uh, so we'll see what they do. The, the good situ- the, It's mainly bad situation, but the, but the good is they can create cap space pretty easily. Uh, the Patriots are next. $49 million in cap, however, the most we've seen from the Patriots in a while. But there's a reason for that because their top, three, top tier free agents are free agents. Uh, in adding on top of Tom Brady, Devin McCourty, Kyle Van Noy, and Jamie Collins, uh, Matthew Slater, their best special team member, the best special team in football, and Joe Thune, an offense alignment. Those guys are all free agents too. I think their biggest need is tight end. They desperately, desperately miss targets, and that's why receivers out there as well. But they desperately miss Gronk specifically. Um, and then quarterbacks a big need because other, you know, Stidham I like, but I don't think he's ready. I th- I think chances are they bring Brady back for you know a year or two. And they kind of go that route, but uh, they're gonna have to. It's pretty much gonna be a similar Patriots team, you know. Rare if they if they're wild if they decide to tear it down, um, but you know I think they'll use their money to re-sign Brady for a year or two. Devin McCourty, Kyle Van Noy, Kyle Van Noy's pretty. I think that might be actually the biggest one there. I know a quarterback position's big, but uh, Van Noy I still think he's got a lot of ball left in him, and he's a crucial part of that defense. Jamie Collins played pretty well. Good thing with Jamie Collins is I think you get him back for cheap. Because he didn't play too well anywhere else, I think he likes playing in New England. So I think you know, I think he'll take a cheaper contract here than there. I guess the best way to put it. So interesting situation for the Patriots to be in. Saints got 17 million in cash space. Not the best situation the Saints because 17 million is not a, is not a lot, and all three quarterbacks are free agents: Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Brees, Taysom Hill. 
And I know what you're thinking. Is in your question? Do you have a question out there? It is. Is Teddy Bridgewater listed ahead of Breeze on purpose? And the answer is yes. Um, he is. I, I think Teddy Bridgewater is more the priority. Um, can't wait to see that. My eyes are set on a lot of teams and their situations. Saints quarterback situation is number one. That's the one I can't wait to see. If they choose, if Drew, Drew Brees wants to come back, and Bridgewater, I'm guessing, wants to be a starter, I don't think he'll come back as a backup, and they choose Brees for a year or two over Bridgewater long term, I think a huge mistake. I, I think the priority is Teddy Bridgewater. He's shown that he can play in the system. He's shown he can win, uh, and he can improve. I think you sign him. I think he'll be cheaper. I think he's about to – it's not going to be cheap, but I think he's. it's like a cheaper option than – Compared to other any other guys you'll ha, you'll really ever be able to get in the near future, you know, at that level. So if they may have to have a tough decision between Teddy Bridgewater and Drew, Drew Brees, I think they have to go Bridgewater. Um, Brees, I don't see playing anywhere else at the same time, so it's interesting. Taysom Hill, I think they'll get back. I think he'll. I, I think he knows he fits this system. I think some other teams will give him give him a look. Not too many. Uh, I like Taysom Hill. I mean, he's a ball player. You got you got to respect it. You got to love it. Uh, but I think he ends up back on the Saints. A.J. Klein, their linebacker, uh, they like could be back. They also have Andrus Pete and Von Bell as free agents as well. Uh, at the same time, we didn't even discuss that position. Receivers, their biggest need. Michael Thomas really has no help out there. It's a gigantic need. Corner's a big need. You got some free agents there. I think Eli Apple's a free agent as well. Um, you definitely can get better at the position. Marshawn Latimer started the year off really good. Then really went downhill. I did not like his play last year either. So I'm not really I'm not super high on Marshawn Latimer at the moment. Uh, so they they definitely need another corner. Not saying they need to replace him at all, but they need another one. And linebacker AJ Klein's a free agent, and they can get better at that position. You see, Kiko Alonso got hurt pretty bad at the end of the year. I don't know if he's long term guy. Anyways, Saints have some needs. You know the the bad news is all three quarterbacks are free agents. You know whether you want to call Taysom Hill a quarterback or not, they have other free agents. They have needs more needs than you think. They only have 17 million cap on top of that. That's all the bad news. The good news is. They're still going to be a good team. They're very well coached. They're going to be a good team still, whatever they decide. Uh, so that's kind of the good news there. Giants, $64 million in cap space. Uh, the bad thing is right off the bat is the Leonard Williams trade. I uh, did not like that trade at the time, and now it sounded like they may not get him back. And even if they do, I think they did trade a lot for, I call him a solid defense alignment. Marcus Golden was pretty big for them this year. They could want him back. Other than that, uh, David Mayo they liked, but they could get better at, at that position. Um, going elsewhere, Mike Remmers, I'm not a Mike Remmers guy. They definitely can get better at that position. Um, so really, I think, I think their priority would be on Leonard Williams, Marcus Golden. They may be able to get David Mayo back for a little cheaper, $64 million. They can make that happen and some. I just don't want. I really don't want them to overspend on Leonard Williams. Uh, they could be forced to do that because I think he he's going to want a lot, and they just trade for him, so that's kind of the bad thing. Uh, they do have needs at outside linebacker, which is edge rush. Uh, in their current defense, they could in a new coach. They could switch the scheme up. I don't think they will, um, but they very well could. Pass rusher is basically what they need. Right tackle, replace Mike Remmers. Get that offensive line set for Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones does have a filming problem. Let's keep him protected. And linebacker, inside linebacker, they can definitely get better on top of Mayo being a free agent. So it's a team. It's not really a surprise. You know, they have needs. 64 million in cap. They don't have to. The good news is they don't have to bring a lot of their own guys back for a lot of money. Um, you know, the, the bad news. Yeah, the bad news is they have a bunch of needs, but it, it's you no. Know, there are we already know they're in rebuild mode, so it's really nothing new. It's not bad news really. Uh, the Jets are next. 57 million in cap space. They have some needs. The New York teams are basically the same, besides the Bills. Uh, great situation for the Bills. Um, top three needs offensive line. They pretty much pretty much need everything there. They pretty much need everything on the offensive line. Uh, receiver, they have free agents like Robbie Anderson. Even with Robbie Anderson, I don't. To me, they don't have a number one receiver. Um, they they can get better there. But the good news is they can. They don't have to spend on that. Uh, they they can go to the draft and focus on that. You don't even need. Don't feel like you have to bring back Robbie Anderson. Don't feel like you have to. For the right price, you can. Offensive line, I think you can focus on free agency and, and partly the draft too, but mainly receiver. Pass rush, I think upgrading pass rush and um, you know I wasn't able to squeeze corner in here because that, that's a huge need as well. But if you're able to upgrade pass rush and corner, that defense actually could become elite, and I mean that. Maybe not right away, but it definitely can be. Um, you see other free agents really. I mean guys like Jordan Jenkins and James Burgess, they actually stepped up for them. You know, kind of surprisingly stepping up guys, guys that – May not fit well anywhere else, so the good news is they can get those guys back for, for cheaper, but they definitely can upgrade still. Um, so they really don't have to – the good news is they have a decent amount of cap. They don't need to spend big on their own free agents. I hope they don't. It's possible they do. 
uh, and they can really focus on that pass rushing offense line and free agency uh, in corner two and then go ham on the top tier receivers in the draft. Uh, pretty decent situation, but not really an organization I trust fully to handle it well You know, at the same time. I'm not saying they won't handle it well, but I think you get what I mean. The Raiders got $60 million in cap space at the moment. Uh, good news is, you know, they have some free agents. Um, you know, they have some free agents, but I, yeah, not they're, they're not going to cost a lot, and you don't really have to feel like you have to go spend on these guys. So kind of the similar situation we just talked about. They kind of can just focus on their main needs and kind of build up and make their team better. Um, go get that receiver. Again, you can focus on that on the draft. Uh, I think you just spend on linebacker and corner, you know, positions like that. They're, they did a good job revamping the offensive line last offseason. Uh they're in an okay situation, you know. It's it's it, they're in a, I say a good situation. It's not a great situation um, because it's, it's tricky with their quarterback. You know, Derek Carr can play. You know, he can he can play. He's still learning the Gruden system, um, but he hasn't really been a big winner. You know, could they get better? I think they can get better, honestly. So that's kind of the tricky situation. But I think they can get better. I think they can get better here. Uh, it's good that they have their offensive line set. Um, you know, maybe they can add some depth, but. Um, yeah, they can kind of just focus on the rest with the, with that sixty seven million and in the draft, like any team that needs receiver, I think you kind of can put that aside. You know, I think it's safe to do it. That's the good thing. I think it's safe. Like you could, uh, you know, you, you go on free agency. You you may think we like these guys here, a group of guys in the draft, but we're not guaranteed to get them. So we kind of got to get these guys in free agency. But for a receiver, you know, you're going to get some ball players with this crazy receiver class. So that's kind of the good thing. They can focus else, elsewhere. So pretty good situation. Uh, Eagles, $49 million in cap space. Huge need at receiver. We saw that down the line. Uh, they definitely need upgrades, you know. Um, Deshaun Jackson, you can't trust to stay healthy. Alshon Jeffrey's getting up there in age. They need, even if those guys are healthy, they still need to get better. Um, uh, Nigel Bradham, I want to point out right away, is a team option, so I'd, I'd say most likely he'll be back. He's their best linebacker. Uh, other than that, though, they definitely need more linebacker help. That's obvious. So that's why it's up there in the top three need. And then uh, Timmy Jernigan's a free agent, but uh, I don't think it's a must to bring him back. Jalen Mills, I haven't been thrilled with him. Maybe his first year there, he's kind of a surprise. But other than that, Jason Peters, they don't really need to bring back either uh, because they, that's what they drafted Andre Dillard for. Good looking ahead by them. Ronald Darby, you know, honestly, maybe their best corner, but he just keeps getting hurt. So what do you do there? I, I would like Jordan Howard back. I think, you know, I know he was hurt. I think he looked really good. I think the offense looked better with, you know, both him and Miles Sanders in there. Um, you know, Howard looked good with them. I, I, you know, I think they can get him back cheaper too. So I would like for them, for them to bring him back, honestly. Um, but biggest needs are receiver, linebacker, and corner. I think pretty obvious what their biggest needs are there. Uh, they could use rec- uh, pass rush depth, you know, pet future. But those are those are giant needs to me. Receiver, linebacker, corner, those are giant needs. They have cap space. They'll get Bradham back with uh, with the option. So it's, it's a solid situation, but. Uh, they need to get a healthier team because these these are guys that could get hurt at any time. That's kind of the the bad side. Steelers are next, uh, five million in cap, so that's not the best. And Bud Dupree, who's been a letdown in his career until this year, has been very good this year. So I think they'll want to bring him back. Do they want to use the franchise tag on him though? Uh, maybe that'll pay him a little more than he should be paid because he's only had one good year. Um, so that's kind of an interesting situation. Javon Hargrave, they like up front on the D line. They'll want to bring him back. Uh, Vance McDonald's a team option actually, so I think he, I think he'll be back. They did trade for Van Ness, which I was surprised with what they gave up. Not a whole bunch, but a little more than I would wanted them to. He's actually a free agent. Uh, Mike Hilton, their slot corner, free agent Sean Davis, safety. I think they'll let him go. And Matt Fi- Matt Filer, the right tackle. I think they'll want to bring him back. But I kind of mentioned that for a couple guys, I think they'll want to bring him back. Same time, they have five million in cap space. I think it can go up a little bit with some moves, but. Uh, little tricky situation, a little tricky situation because which guys you want back. Dupree played really good last year, like I said, so it's a little tricky. I think they need a tight end. Uh, I think a big-time tight end will make their offense that much better. Corner's a big need to me. Uh, Mike Hilton, the slot corner, is a free agent. Joe Hayden played a pretty good year, but he's getting up there in age. Other than that, you know, Justin Lane, you don't really know. We don't. It's a decent pick. We don't really know a whole bunch. Uh, I didn't even know our starting corner. I really do. And running back, James Conner I like. Can't stay healthy. They need somebody to pair with him so they can split and limit his carries, and they need speed out of the backfield. They desperately, desperately need speed out of the backfield. So running back's another big need. Good news is they don't have a whole bunch of needs. You know, it's kind of just these three. Uh, but, yeah, the bad news is limited on cap, and they do have some free agents. 
Uh, Seattle's next. Like the situation, Seattle. I actually like it. There's some good free agents there, but I, I, I like it. $65 million for a team still alive is very, very good. Jadavion Clowney, they'll have to pay. We'll see if they decide to do that. It'd be, you know, I think I think they'll do it. I think they'll do it. Um, but that's not going to take $65 million in cap. Not even close. Um, so I think they'll do that. You know, yeah, the bad news is some good interior D-linemen for them are free agents. Jaron Reed and, and Quentin Jefferson. Quentin Jefferson, I really like this year. He, he's he's big time for them. The way he moves around, plays different spots, different positions along the D-line. Um, they, ha- they have some young defensive linemen that I think that can fit that uh, – you know that that role. You know they've you know we've seen them draft some over the last few years. Uh, Collier, yeah, Collier. I feel like is more that Jefferson type. You know, but they they like him at edge rusher. And, you know, Ziggy Ansah's a free agent too. He didn't help them out at all. Um, you know, Reed's your traditional D tackle. They do have Puna Ford. Um, yeah, they 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 got some guys that with the flexibility of moving around. So I think they can go and sign Clowney. I think they'll sign one of uh, you know I think it's almost a lock that they sign one of Reed or Jefferson. Yeah, can, you know they would like both back. Iupati, they could, they would like back, um, but with 65 million and the ability to re-sign, you know, one or two of those, you know, I'd say two of those top free agents, um, you know, they can, they can look at the rest of the cast base to make this team elite, and that, that's the good thing. I think they can make this team. I don't think it's elite right now. I think it's a very good team, obviously, but I don't think it's elite. Um, when you have Russell Wilson, now, now's your time to go make it elite. Go build that offense line. See, Iupati's a free agent. Um, Ifedi's a free agent too, but you can get better on that O line. You can get better. Go build up that offensive line. Uh, defensive end, I think they need another pass rusher, another solid pass rusher with Clowney, and Clowney's a free agent on top of it. Uh, that's something they need. And receiver, um, also free agents are Brown and David Moore as well, Jerron Brown and David Moore. Um, so in, in the whole Josh Gordon situation, it's pretty much Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. You, you have two really good receivers there. You need more. Similar to the Vikings situation. You got two really good receivers. You desperately need more. Um, so they, they, they have the needs there. They have the needs, they have their free agents, but they're already a really good team. You with 65 million, you're in a really good situation to go make this team from great to elite. I, I think, um, so I kind of like it. it. It's still, they got to make it happen first. It's a little scary because they have some good free agents there, but I like it. Uh, the Niners, 23 million cap space. One of the better teams in football. That's, that's pretty good. They do have some good free agents though. You see that Jimmy Ward. Ark Armstead had a really good year. Emmanuel Sanders, who was really good for them, and a Matt Breida. Matt Breida's not really a must. They like him, but they got a long list of running backs, uh, so that's not really a must. Use checks technically a free agent, but he has the team option. I believe they will bring him back with that option. I'm very confident in that. Kendrick Bourne, who's a good rotation receiver, is a free agent. They can get him back cheap. Uh, good news, Emmanuel Mosley's a free agent, but he's an exclusive restricted free agent, meaning most likely, very, very likely, he will be back. He was pretty good for them at corner this year. Uh, 23 million they could use to spend on Jimmy Ward, who had a big time year. Ark Armstead, Emmanuel Sanders, could they squeeze out and get all three of those guys back with that? I think they can create more cast space, and yes, I think they can do so. Um, they could maybe not. They can decide not to re-sign one of those guys and go to the draft. Some teams I didn't rip, but I said it wasn't such a good situation because they have the cap space to sign their own guys. They're going to do that, but they're going to look like the same exact team. I didn't like that for some teams because those teams with their current team weren't able to get things done. The Niners were. So if they re-sign their guys and they go to the draft, it's a, it's a win because they already have a good enough team to compete, and then they add the draft on top of it, which doesn't take a whole bunch of cap space. It's a good situation. If they want to let Jimmy Ward, it's an example, Jimmy Ward walk, they can fill that uh, hole in the draft with safety. Um, there's a reason why the Niners are really good right now because they don't have a bunch of needs. You know, they 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 could need they could use a safety. They could use another corner. They were injured there. Richard Sherman's getting up their age, but he's still playing at a high level. And I listed DN, which actually might surprise, but a key part of this team is their pass rush. And we've seen D Ford hurt this year, and they could use much more of a rotation. But that kind of goes back to it. They really don't have huge needs, and that's kind of why DN falls under there. I, I think they're mainly it's just safety and corner, defensive back. Um, so pretty good situation for the Niners there, especially if they can create a little more cap space. Buccaneers, interesting team. One of the interesting teams going to the free agency. $87 million in cap space, an insane amount in cap space, but an insane amount of free agents. The key here is both their pass rushers. Shaq Barrett, they signed to a one-year $4 million deal. Nobody expected him to be that good. Now he's going to get paid because he got 19 and a half sacks. Jason Pierre-Paul looks pretty darn good. Uh, you know, I, I thought he was mainly a 4-3 end. I was a little worried about the, the change in defense. He looked good. Ten games, eight and a half sacks, looked good. 
So they have those two pass rusher free agents, which they have $87 million to get both of them back, but they also have Jameis Winston, their quarterback, free agent. Arians doesn't have the best comments about his quarterback, Winston, so what are they going to do? What's the situation? I, I think right now, I think it's likely they can bring Winston back for a deal, maybe draft one to learn behind him, or they can just go... I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're only gonna go with a draft guy. I don't think that's a possibility. Um, so I think they or they can. It's either like Winston for a year and draft a guy, or bring in a free agent. You know, maybe like a Teddy Bridgewater if you're able to get your hands on him. You have the cap space. Um, so I think it's like one or the other. Sue looked pretty good for them. He's a free agent. I don't know if it's an absolute must to bring back, but they did have one of the better, maybe the best run defenses in football. So maybe that's key to bring him back. Uh, Demar Dotson's a free agent, right tackle. Brashard Perriman looked really good for them. I think they can get him back cheaper than you would think. So they can bring him back. Peyton Barber, Nasib, Minter, those guys are not really a must to bring back. Uh, I got I like the young talent they brought in last year. I think they can focus on uh, you know, these guys that are listed right here. And maybe a guy like Perriman. Biggest needs, you know, I think Winston can be much better with a better run game. Um, because he, everybody knows it, predictability is the number one part of, of an offense or being unpredictable. Uh, everyone everyone in the world knows that, that Winston's throwing the ball most of the time, and they really have a run game. Um, so run, running back is their biggest need, hands down. Quarterback with Winston being a free agent and you know their future, it's definitely a big need. We'll see what they decide. Uh, and then pass rush because both of their pass rushes are free agents. A lot of people stuck on offensive line. Yes, they need a right tackle. It, it, to me, it's one position they need badly. Um, it can't be a priority. It, it should not be a priority. They can survive having Dodson back or having maybe a weaker spot at one offensive line spot. They can survive. They're, you know, I would like for them to bring give Winston another try, uh, and then maybe draft one and learn behind him. Um, but and that's because you know if they get a running game, Winston's gonna be that much better. You know, I don't think they can survive without a better running back. You know, I think they got guys that are good backups. You know, Ronald Jones is a good second string running back. They need to get better at the position. And I I do think right tackle is a need, but it can't be your priority here. These three are your priorities. I, you know, I don't. It's it's my opinion, but I you know I feel very strongly about that. They have some key free agents. The good news is they have eighty seven million in cap space. Tennessee Titans for a good team that's a good number forty eight million, but they have a bunch of big time free agents. Derrick Henry, that's a must bring back. Ryan Tannehill feels like a must bring back. To those guys though, where where's the market on them? There there are a lot of GMs that don't believe in spending you know ninety million on a running back, which was spent on Zeke. There's a lot that don't you know that they, they believe on going back to the draft every four or five years. Um but I mean he is a big part, maybe the best running back in football too. A uh, big part of their team. So I think they're gonna they're gonna spend on him. And Ryan Tannehill, one proven year. How much do you spend? Is somebody else gonna come in there and spend something the Titans don't want to or can't? One of those guys will probably get the franchise tag. One of those guys, I'd say Tannehill gets the franchise tag. Derrick Henry gets some big money. Uh, Logan Ryan was big time for them this year. Uh, they drafted a, they drafted Hooker from Iowa to play in the slot. They drafted him for a reason. So they would like Ryan back still. Drafting Hooker last year doesn't mean that he won't be back or they don't want him back. But it's not the end of the world if they don't get him back. But he played very well this year. Tricky situation in the offensive line. Right tackle specifically Jack Conklin um, versus Dennis Kelly. Conklin, they'd rather have him back. Ke- Kelly... Is worthy of being a starter, actually. Not as good as Conklin, but will be a lot cheaper. So they're, they're going to go one or the other. Um, but first things first is see where they're at after the cap space spending of Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. Uh, they also have Woodyard, Wesley Woodyard. I think they're going to let him walk. They've done a very, very good job of drafting inside linebacker. He was much better like two, three years ago than he is now. I think he'll walk. Ferkser has been a big-time player for them, uh, playing tight end and fullback. Uh, and uh, I think they'll, he's a free he's a free agent, but I, they'll, they'll get him back because he's an exclusive restricted free agent. So he's theirs pretty much. He'll, he'll be back. So it's a good number to have for a good team. Uh, but, yeah, they have some big-time free agents, but it, I, I still think it's a pretty good situation. We'll see what they decide on Henry and Tannehill. Uh, and then for the long video. Jesus, this is a long video. I could have split this up. We'll split most of the offseason up uh, into sections, divisions maybe, by team. Uh, but the Redskins cap space, $46 million. Uh, and then top free agents, Brandon Scherf, Adrian Peterson, who has a team option, Vernon Davis, Donald Penn. Um, you know, with that being said, I, I think uh, I think guard, you know, I think they could use another one with Scherf, and he's a free agent. Cornerback, they, they could use two starters, honestly. And then um, 
receiver. It's pretty much Terry McLaurin. I got some other guys that can play, but it's pretty much Terry McLaurin out there. Um, they definitely could use uh, more more receivers around Terry McLaurin to give Dwayne Haskins some help. But yeah, I think get, keeping Dwayne Haskins protected is key. Um, so building that offense lineup, that we'll, we'll see what they decide with Trent Williams. That's kind of another situation, but I think they can get him back. I think maybe look at guard re- priority re-signing Scherf. Um, so we'll see what they decide there. Both back of quarterbacks Keenum and uh, Colt McCoy are free agents, so that's something to look at as well. And then Bostic, who played inside linebacker for them, is a free agent. Could get him back cheap, but you could get better there. So I, I think priority is re-signing your own guy Scherf, which you have forty-six million, and then kind of filling the holes elsewhere free agency in the draft which is doable with the 46 million and um yeah they, they kind of make sure they keep Haskins protected though and then yeah corners that huge need and getting more of the weapons for for Haskins there um just now I believe I forgot to talk about I forgot to talk about the needs for for Titans but pretty obvious I think mean, another pass rusher it's pretty much Harold Landry out there uh Cameron Wake could be back but he's getting up there in age got hurt cornerback Malcolm Butler got hurt other than that they could get better um, I like Adoree Jackson. I, you know, it's a, they can get they can get another guy in there that can contribute a little more. Malcolm Butler not going to be around forever too. And quarterback with Tannehill being a, Tannehill and Mariota being a free agent. Um, I forgot to talk about Mariota too. Um, you know, both those guys being free agents. Uh, you know, quarterback is a pretty big big need there. So, but not too worried about them solving that with Tannehill there. So, uh, and then yeah, that that does it. That's all. That's all. Thirty two teams. There's a lot we talked about. So let's wrap this up. Appreciate you guys for being here. More videos like this, uh, more playoff prediction videos coming. Please subscribe to both channels. Follow our Twitter. Link in the description for all that. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.